Hello and welcome back to AP Daily Practice Sessions. I'm Lacey Van Reith and in this video, we're gonna learn how to best tackle FRQ number five of your APR history exam, attribution of an unknown work. If you would like to work through this FRQ with me, click on the link that's over the video and uh, you'll be able to download the PDF uh, and uh, work through it with me on your own as we go through this video together. Question number five on your AP Art History exam is going to be attribution of an unknown work. Things that you need to know and things that you need to do. First of all, suggested time is 15 minutes. Like all the short FRQs, five task points is what you have to answer. You will be given an image for this question, but it will not be one of the 250 curriculum images, but it's gonna strongly resemble one of the works that is on the curriculum. And that's pretty much the point of this question. You're gonna make sure as with all of your FRQs that you write in complete sentences, and you're going to want to make sure that you use keywords from the question in your response, which I'm going to show you some examples of today. So this is the example we're going to be looking at. There's our pictures. We're given an interior and an exterior view of a building. And I don't know about you, but that building immediately reminds me of a building we did learn. Not exactly the same, but it's really similar. And that's the point of this question. We're going to break down that question together in just a second. That's the question we're gonna be practicing with. So for the attribution question for FRQ number five, tidbit number one, this FRQ is assessing your visual recognition skills. You're looking at the picture, you're connecting it to something that you did learn. It's gonna look familiar, that's the point. This question is not, it is not trying to trick you. That's a big thing to remember. If you're thinking this building looks a lot like the Colosseum, you're right because this building was also an amphitheater built during the Roman Empire by the Imperial Romans. They used the same materials and techniques to build this amphitheater that they did to build the Flavian Amphitheater, the Colosseum in Rome. And it was used for the same purposes. So all that information that you learned about the Colosseum can be applied to this building. They're not asking you to know this building, but you know the culture that made it. Tidbit number two, Everything, as I said before, that you learned about the work that this one is most similar to, which is the Colosseum, the Flavian Amphitheater, you can apply to this question. Tidbit number three, this question is about similarities. I cannot stress this enough. Do not, do not waste your time on differences. Focus on what they have in common. What does this building have in common with the building you did learn that it looks the most similar to? So let's break down this FRQ together. The images show two views of the same architectural structure. The work shown is not included in the required course content. Correctly attribute the work shown to the culture that created it. So they want us to give us, they want us to give them the culture. That's important. That's task one. Using two examples. So this is gonna be tasks two and task three. Uh, of specific visual evidence. We gotta give them specific visual stuff. Justify the attribution. That's one of our task verbs, correctly attribute. And now we're justifying our attribution. We're um, defending our choice by describing relevant similarities between this work, the work shown and other works created by the same culture. So we're allowed to connect it to any work made by this, any, any other works made by this same culture. Not necessarily just the one on our curriculum, but chances are we're gonna be connecting it to the one that we did learn, which is the Colosseum. And um, that's task two and three. Tasks four and five, using two examples of specific visual or contextual evidence. They give us options there. Explain, that is our highest level taxonomy task verb explaining. We got to give them depth with that explanation. Explain how the design and or construction of the work shown were related to its function. So we have to have visual or contextual evidence. We have to use that to explain how the design related to its function or how the construction of the building related to its function. So they give us a little bit of flexibility there. So that's T4 and T5. So let's check out some responses. For task one, correctly attribute the work shown to the culture that created it. This would be an example of a weak response. The building shown was made by the Romanesque culture because that culture used arches a lot. 
well yeah the romanesque culture did use arches a lot because they were copying the romans but romanesque is incorrect that was a medieval era of architecture that came way later they copied the imperial romans so unfortunately while this response is in the ballpark and they're recognizing features it's incorrect so that's why that is a weak response this would be a great response the structure shown can be attributed i'm using that magic that that this answer is using that magic word from the question correctly attribute so the structure shown can be attributed to the imperial roman culture being specific not just saying rome but specifically what era of roman history was it made as it looks incredibly similar to the Colosseum, so already making that connection to the building that it's most similar to also known as the flavian amphitheater which was also made during the imperial roman era that is an awesome response for t1 way to go sample question all right looking at t2 and t3 using two examples of specific visual evidence justify the attribution by describing relevant similarities between the work shown and other works created by the same culture this is an example of a weak response this building and others made during the romanesque era were made of this same colored stone well again the wrong culture is mentioned which is a problem and what color stone if you're going to be specific about a color you need to be specific about the color describe the color or identify the type of stone so that's not very good incorrect this building and others made during the same culture were always round because circles were their favorite shape and they symbolized heaven and uh, that's not the case that's incorrect uh, not all the buildings were round and they weren't round because they symbolize heaven. They were round for another reason because people needed to see what was going on in the center. So that's incorrect as well. Let's check out two really strong examples for T2 and for T3. This structure can be attributed to the Imperial Roman era because it heavily features, heavily features, and notice again, we're using those keywords. This structure can be attributed to, so using those keywords from the question, to the imperial roman era because it heavily features the use of repeated arches which can also be seen on the imperial roman Colosseum, also known as the flavian amphitheater so connecting it to the building that it's most similar to very specifically that's an awesome t2 here's another example t2 and t3 are the same task but they have to be different examples that you give so another visual similarity that attributes there again using keywords from the question in my response Another visual similarity that attributes this building to the Imperial Roman era is the ovular shape that is surrounded by seating for spectators to be able to see the action, the action in the center area. This is nearly identical to the Colosseum in Rome. That is another awesome example, connecting it very specifically to the shape that is ovular of the Colosseum in Rome. This one has the same shape. So that's an awesome T3. Let's look at some weak examples of T4 and T5. Using two examples of specific visual or contextual evidence, explain how the design and or construction of the work shown are related to its function. So let's check these out. The arches of this structure shown were used to create large churches for large Christian gatherings. Without arches like this, churches would not have been able to have been built that large. Again, this response seems to be talking about Romanesque architecture of the medieval era, and that's going to be incorrect. During this Romanesque culture, the goal of the architects was to build structures that could hold more worshipers at one time and an increase in pilgrims traveling to see holy relics. Again, this student seems to be talking about Romanesque, and they're correct for Romanesque, but they're not correct for Imperial Roman and how a building like this would have been used. So this student has definitely studied art history and they probably really liked Romanesque architecture of the medieval world, but they're connecting it incorrectly here. Uh, so that's not a good response. Here's a strong response for T4. The arches and barrel vaults. Ooh, nice art history terms, can, terms for architecture used in the construction of this building. So using one of those keywords from the question, I had to talk about specific visual or contextual evidence that explains how the design or construction of the work are related to its function. 
So arches and barrel vaults used in the construction of this building, just like in the Colosseum. Yes, connecting it to the same to the building you you learned about, allowed the structure to support and distribute massive amounts of weight. So talking about what the structure needed to do, it had to support a lot of people. These types of amphitheaters would need to hold the weight and movement of tens of thousands of spectators who would attend to watch various types of violent entertainment. That response is excellent. It talks about visual features of the building and how it accommodated the function of the space as a place where people watched violent entertainment and had to hold tens of thousands of bodies. So that is an awesome response for T4. For FRQ number five, the attribution question on your exam. You can, you can be asked on this question to attribute a work of art that you've never seen before to um, a specific culture or to a specific artist. So that question that we just reviewed together asked you, asked you to attribute it to a specific culture, the Imperial Roman culture. But an attribution question could ask you to attribute it to an artist. We learn about The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh in our curriculum. They could give you another Vincent van Gogh and ask you to attribute it to the artist who painted it. Or they could uh, give you another Basquiat painting, not the horn players that we have on our curriculum. And they could ask you to attribute it to the contemporary artist who created it. So attributions can be cultural or they can be a specific artist's name or architect's name. So that's an important thing to know. And remember what I told you from the get-go of our little review session here. Focus on the similarities between the work you're being shown in the FRQ and the work that you learned on the curriculum that it's most similar to. There's lots of things you could talk about with differences. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast, but don't do it. Focus on the things that they have in common. Otherwise you're wasting your time and you have lots of FRQs to answer and uh, you don't wanna waste your precious time. So focus only on the similarities. I know you guys are going to do great on the attribution question. It'll be fun to see which uh, artist or culture we get as our attribution question this year uh, and in the years to come. I hope you guys learned a lot about the attribution skill today and how to approach the question. And best of luck on your exam.